Hello and welcome to Ladies Talking Business. I'm your host, Morimi Akonwo. On today's episode, we will be discussing the interior design industry in Nigeria. Our guest is an interior designer with over 20 years of experience, who is an alumni of the Sheffield School of Interior Design, as well as the Ivy School of Interiors, Bath, England, where she received an advanced diploma in interior design. She is the CEO of Sixth Sense Interiors, an interior design and furniture company that specializes in the design, decoration, and enhancement of living spaces. Over the years, she has been recognized by the Bank of Industry for her contributions in the entrepreneurial sector. In 2013, she received the Top 40 Under 40 Biz Day Award, just to mention a few. Our guest is Temitokwe Olagbegi. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you. But just before I go into the very, very deep questions, what particular experience birthed Sixth Sense? Um, so I suppose um, my flair for interiors most definitely. However, I think there was a deeper burden and the burden was to help people who didn't have a clue or didn't have the eye that I did, you know. So I'd go into spaces and I would be appalled by what I saw, you know. And for no fault of theirs, you know, I just, they just didn't know any better, you mm. know. And so we all have our gifts and I believe interiors, beautifying spaces is one of mine, you know. Okay. And so Sixth Sense was birthed um, as a result of wanting to help people with what came also naturally to me. Okay, so from your passion, right. you decided to make profit. You can say that. <laughs> you can say that. Yeah. Okay, so for someone who's been in this business for over 20 years, yeah. wow, well done. Thank so you. So what notable improvements would you say you've seen over the years? So things that maybe they weren't there before they are now, or they were there before they aren't anymore? Wow. The transition has been, like, amazing, you know. Um, I was coming from a time or maybe an era where people found it difficult to pay someone to actually come into their space to do something with it, you know. Mm -hmm. I was coming from a place where um, people didn't even understand what the vocation was, was about, right? Mm -hmm. You needed to overly explain people confused it for carpentry, they confused it for curtain making. Um, and so that's where, that's the era I'm coming from. Mm. That's where I started. That's how I started, you know. And to see the industry come full circle to the point and place where people are ever so willing to solicit the help of a designer. I mean, that is like amazing, all right? Um, the provision of jobs is something else that has been massive as a result of the growth mm. that's happened in this industry, yeah. all right, yeah. So many people have found things to do and ways to put food on their table. Especially so many hands-on people, like the carpenters, uh, absolutely. the plumbers. Absolutely, and absolutely. Mm. And so um, that, 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 is, that is dramatic. That um, I would say that the contributions of the interior design industry into the Nigerian economy has been like huge. Huge, amazing. So how does a beginner get into this business? So I'm a first time, I have no clue, but I know I have a flair for good things. I've got eyes for good things. How can I get into the business? Are there training institutes in Nigeria? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, to get into the business is to acquire the skill, you know. Um, even when you have a natural flair, it's often good to hone the mm -hmm. flair, yeah, turn it into um, a skill, all okay. right, and get trained. Um, Six Sense runs a training academy, mm -hmm. right, and so that's one of the institutions where one can get certified. Okay, so um, I was trying to find the other day countries that were so big on interior design, and China popped up. Right. 
um, the United States popped up, right. Italy and some other countries. So what can Nigeria do to get there? Because we've got the skill, we've got people who can do these things. We've got the skill, we've got the resources to get this thing done here. But in your own opinion, and for someone who's been here for 20 year, over 20 years, what can Nigeria do to at least step us up a bit in this industry? Um, what Nigeria can do first and foremost is to stabilize the economy. All right. Mm -hmm. It's only a stable economy that can begin to develop on its infrastructure and you know the likes. Mm -hmm. um, our government needs to pay particular attention to this industry because it is such um, an income generator. All right, but the way to start it is by um, ensuring that we have constant power. power. You know the manufacturer. The manufacturing of um, these things like mm. furniture, you know, um, and the machinery to produce this, you know, because we're talking about two, two sides to this sector. We're saying um, we want to produce furniture, all right? But there are also so many machines that we can produce locally to help facilitate the growth of the industry. And so... Power is so integral so to the mm. growth of this. And, you know, it cuts across. It's not just for interior design. For any sector that we want to grow, you know, we need power. Mm. Yeah. And so that is something that has got to be stable and has got to be constant. Right. And then um, institutions, more institutions, more support for institutions that are promoting um, the skill acquisition in this sector would be great okay yes and so it's pockets of people um, the Nigerian educational system has not um, fully integrated interior design as a career course hmm. all right so that is another way that our government can so you don't help. think it's in universities you don't think Nigerian it's in, universities it's in a have few universities but private? it isn't private universities oh, yeah. okay um, it would be very good if these courses were offered in the government universities, mm. all right, yeah. That is one surefire way of boosting um, the awareness of it in the first place. So mm. people have um, 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 flair for this, but they just don't know how know to how channel to, it. Yeah. yeah. Amazing, amazing. Okay, we will go on a short break now. Please stay with us. I'm still here with the CEO of Sixth Sense Limited, an interior design and furniture company, Temitokwe Olagbegi. Okay, so let's, let's talk about your designs. Um, how do you source for the materials and the components for your designs? So do you have to import them or have you built a structure where you get them here in Nigeria? Okay, so um, what, one of the things that, one of the good things that the government has done is in allowing us bring in flat packs all right and so that packs? those are the components all right so it's still a struggle to bring in furniture full furniture okay. however we can bring the components okay right and so that has been a great help um, mm -hmm. in ensuring that the industry experiences growth mm. so I currently have a factory where we make locally produced furniture pieces okay. with the help of those um, design finials that we can get in Nigeria. Yes, oh, so that's okay. what I mean by the flat packs. Okay. So we can bring in accessories and things to just garnish the furniture that we produce. Interesting. So how do you build a profitable interior design business? Not that you go into it now and in the next two, three years, because I think the market is already getting saturated. So but how do you stay um, and how do you build a profitable business such that you're actually reaping you know, the reward of your labor? So I'll start by saying that um, it's important that we, people get into the business for the right reasons. Mm. You know, unfortunately, people are in the business of interior design because they have a preconceived idea that, oh my goodness, it's lucrative, um, but they haven't come um, into in tune and in touch with all that is required to ensure that you know it becomes lucrative for them and mm. profitable you know and that is it requires a lot of resilience 
Okay. It requires a lot of, I mean, you, you would need as a CEO to get your hands dirty. Dirty. Yes. Okay. So yeah. you would have to hang curtains. Well, at, the, at to... the initial stage, you know, just like every business, every startup, you know, the CEO is the one who defines the culture. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. So in my company, there's absolutely nothing that I pretty much don't do. And I have been here for 20 years. All right. Um, it is I may be the design director, so to speak, you know. However, um, I am saying to my staff for every time I am on a project, all right, that I'm not just giving instructions, mm. okay? Yes, I am getting my hands dirty as well, all right? And so um, as regards longevity in business, one needs to be in it for the right reasons, okay. all right? One needs to ensure that one puts in proper structure mm -hmm. into the business okay. right and one needs to find their niche okay. all right it's interior design is so large mm -hmm. all right so yeah really be doing and so yes i mean so many people are a jack of all the aspects of it however if you are if you have found your niche mm -hmm. where you're good at where you thrive stay there and make a name for yourself in that Area, area that you have carved out mm. for yourself. Yeah. Great. So what are the qualities of a good interior designer? A good interior designer must have an eye, right? Okay. The eye is what sets you apart from every other person. Your ability okay. to see things and not just beautiful things, your ability to see the application of things, right? Mm. Um, and a good interior designer should be a people person. All Very right? important. Yes, yeah. You should be amiable. You should be able to hold a conversation, you know. Um, so many people think that interior design is just all about putting pieces in places, pieces in places. But um, I always like to say that interior designers have to be articulate problem solvers. Yeah, because okay. what makes you thrive in the industry is your ability to see a problem and to solve the problem. Mm. Yes, you know. Um, you have to be mathematically inclined to be a good interior designer because really? you're churning oh. out coats, you're converting measurements, measurements. exactly. Mm. And so um, these are just a few of, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about Sixth Sense. What yeah. makes it unique? So why should I go with Sixth Sense, Sixth Sense instead of going with another brand? Um, Sixth Sense is um, very true to its offering, all right? Okay. We are a customer. We are a customer-oriented brand, and so um, I know that a good interior designer is about solving the problem of the customer. Mm. Yeah. So um, people come into design, you know, startup companies, and it's all about their design direction, what they want. You know, Six Sense is about the client. So what the client yes. wants. So what does my client want, and how do I sort my client out? How do I ensure that my client is satisfied at the end of the day? Mm. All right. And I suppose this is how come we've had clients running 19 years wow. who keep calling us back. Yes. Because it's not about us. It's about satisfying the client. All right. Yeah. And I mean, it comes with every other thing. All right. Yes. Our ability to um, transform spaces. All right. Mm. But it's really the core and the heart of it is really about solving problems. Solving the client's problems. Yes. Interesting. Please stay with us for more of this conversation after the break. Thanks for staying with us. I'm still with Temi Tokwe Olagbegi of Sixth Sense Limited. So you've been in this business for over 20 years. Yes. And I know you have had challenges mm -hmm. can you tell me some of the key challenges you face oh all my the god years? <laughs> okay um so i'd say one of um a very one of the very common challenges that a lot of designers have had is staffing all right okay. you know interior design is so hands-on that um there are no best kept secrets okay? okay and so you're pretty much working alongside with every person on your team, all right? The things you do are quite visible and clear to every person on your team. And so staffing is a challenge because sooner than later, 
people wake up to say they, they want, want to start, start their, their own, own business. Typical. Right? Yes. <laughs> and so that has been um, one of the major challenges that um, myself and quite a number of other interior designers have faced. You know, okay. I used to have um, staff who I actually believed were my succession plan. Aww. All right. <laughs> and so it was a rude awakening to find that some of these people had started running parallel businesses to mine. Okay. Yes. All right. And so these are some of the few things that you know, plague us in the industry. Hmm. So apart from staffing, what else? Um, back to what I said, you know, um, the lack of governmental support, okay? Um, because we don't have a lot of the infrastructure that's required to um, fabricate the designs that we have in our heads, yes. all right? We resort to importation, all right? Hmm. And the depreciation of the Naira has not helped. Right, um, the taxes that we have to pay to bring these things in have not helped either, mm. and so in a case where um, we are not getting the support that's required, right, to build homegrown industries, all right, and then we have to pay heavy duties, heavy tax duties, right, it becomes pretty expensive. Um, for our clients, clients at yeah. the end of the day, so the consumers. So have been able to manage that, that you still have clients coming back after 19 years, 17 um, years? So it's a potpourri of things that we've managed to do. And one of the reasons why we've had to build our homegrown in homegrown factory is so that we can give people the option. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. You have the option of um, going high end or you have the option, we call it the cheap and the cheerful, all right? Cheap Where we meet you in between mm -hmm. to sort your needs out with our local materials that okay. are available to us here. Oh, interesting, that's, that's a good strategy. Mm -hmm. So what's the future of Sixth Sense? Ah, the future of Sixth Sense is um, to cater more to the middle class. The middle class? I have a, I have a philosophy that Everyone is deserving of a beautiful home, mm. yes. From the market person to the tailor down the road. Every person should be entitled to, because we say that shelter is supposedly a basic amenity, but um, shelter without it being comfortable, mm. all right? Um, doesn't augur well for productivity, right? Relationship building. And so one of the things that I am about is building healthy relationships in the family system. And one of the things Sixth Sense has done for me is making families accessible to me. Okay. Right? Um, I'm a marriage counselor. I'm a life coach. And so um, my entry into a person's space is beyond just physically beautifying the space. Okay. I want to do a lot more, okay? Beautifying the space physically is just one of the things that can be done, all right, to ensure that a family is wholesome or a person is whole, right? And so um, back to um, where I started as regards um, ensuring that every person has got a nice enough place, all right? You, if, you, if, you, if you live in a comfortable enough space, you would think well. Mm. If you live in a comfortable enough space, you'd be emotionally balanced. If you live in a comfortable enough of space, all right, your productivity levels just, you know, heightens, okay? Mm. And so how do we get to a Ni become a Nigeria where it's basic that everyone enjoys, however simple, but yet comfortable living space. Living spaces. Yeah. Amazing. So that's the future and that's the direction for Sixth Sense. How can we begin to um, talk about this more in government quarters? All right, yes. How do we begin to explain this in the first place? That it's more than just providing shelter. Okay, yeah. How can we bring down the cost of it? You know, something that is so close to my heart is as simple as mattresses, 
Hmm, getting the right mattress or, or ensuring people have mattresses? In people room. have, you know, the right kind of comfort to sleep. sleep. Right? You would be amazed how just this simple thought translates into bridging the dysfunction that there is in our family systems. Hmm. Yeah. Wow, interesting. I've never seen it that way, but thank you yeah. so much for pointing that out to us. Yeah. And thank you so much for joining us thank on the you. show today. We so wish much. you all the very best at thank Sixth you. Sense. Thank you. This is how far we can go on this episode of Ladies Talking Business. Do join us next week for another episode. I'm Morimi Akonwo. See you next time.